guys. Welcome to Yo! Yarn Girls podcast. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from the Denver, Colorado area. For those returning viewers, thank you so much for returning. I really appreciate it. And anyone that's new that has stopped by, thanks. Hope you like what you see. Press that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started. It feels like it's been like six months, but it's only been about a month. Um, longer than what I would have liked to gone between um, podcasts, but life has just been happening. So May was a really, really hectic month uh, for me and my family. And then every time I got ready to go and film a podcast, it was just, I couldn't get in the right headspace to do that. And then of course there's the editing part and I just wasn't prepared. So I decided to wait until I was in a better place um, don't have a lot of finished objects. Uh, May just didn't bring a lot of knitting for me. And of course, today I wake up and I'm all prepared to film and I have a sore throat. So bear with me. I am drinking just some ginger lemon tea. Um, hope that soothes my throat. And we will go ahead and get started. So I do have a few finished objects and I'll share my first finished object I showed in my last podcast I was working on it and these are all going to be I'm going to pop a picture in of this but these will all be finished objects I still have um, ends to weave in so um but it is finished this was a test knit that I did for um Amanda of Mandy's Makings and this uh, went along with some yarn that she dyed up for um it was like a Wizard of Oz theme, but this uh, cowl is called No Place Like Home Cowl. And love the colors you, I held. Um, I used my Destination uh, Lanes yarn, subscription yarn. I think it was called South Africa was the uh, title of the main color that I held. Double with just a bunch of random minis that I had. Some are from um, Mandy's Makings. Uh, some random minis that I had that I got with some sock sets or share pairs. So really liked the way this came out. It's super duper soft. Um, I can see myself really wearing this over the, um, when the winter months come, but right now this will be just blocked and put away and ready for next winter. That being said, um, I will go ahead and show a, a whip. It's not a finished object, but because I'm talking about the, um, no place like home cow. I told Mandy that I would start one and I wanted to try it with mohair and a fingering weight. And so I have, uh, based on May and just not being able to do a whole lot of knitting, I haven't gotten very far, but I will finish this. Um, so far I am liking the way that it is coming out. And this is just mohair and, and it's a Lolo did it, uh, fingering weight, um, yarn. And I will link all the yarns and stuff below. But um, really, really so far like this. And again, it's very, very soft. So I could see myself uh, really wearing this um, next winter as well. So super excited. And that, I guess, is really one of my whips. But I wanted to show it since we were talking about that a cowl. My next finished object, fresh off the needles. Again, haven't had time to weave in any ends. And I will pop a picture in here of this. But it's the Outstranding Shawl. This is by Christy Archer, and I joined in a cowl that Nitty Natty had with Yarnia Yarns in New Jersey, um, along with uh, Christy Archer, and this was a cowl. It actually ended on the 26th of May, and I was very, very close to being finished. I just really had to bind off, but um, did not really, I didn't meet the deadline, which, you know, again, no pressure, but I do like being part of these um knit alongs and try to keep up. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, but I am gonna aggressively block this. I'm gonna pop a picture in just so you'll be able to see the whole thing, but really, really like the colors in this. This is also a Lolo Did It yarn. And then I added the purple, the deep purple, Lisa's favorite color, um, is from Yarn Cafe Creations. Just, it was a fingering weight uh, yarn, a uh, skein that I got from her that I for some socks and I just never used it so I pulled that out I did use deep stash for this I did not get my yarn uh, pack from 
uh, Yarnia, which was fine to do. Um, they didn't have a problem with it. And then there were two other minis that came with this Lolo Did It uh, yarn. This was actually for a knit along way back when I lived in Florida and I opted to not do it. Um, didn't feel experienced enough, but I had the yarn. So I pulled it out of stash again and used this for the Outstranding shawl. Beautiful, beautiful shawl, super soft. And like I said, I'll pop in a picture so you'll be able to see the whole thing um, because it is a little bit on the larger side. But again, I'm, I'm gonna aggressively block it and hopefully it'll be even larger. I see myself making um, more of these and um, possibly as a gift knit. It was a fun knit, um, kind of relaxing. It was a four row repeat for most of the sections and not hard to memorize. So I will definitely um, be casting on a, another one of those. She, Christy Archer actually just had a call for um, test knitters for a tank that she has, and I'm gonna look. Um, I'm gonna look into doing that. So again, I you know I don't want to get caught up in too many um, too many of the cows, but I or test knits. It's you know I don't like the pressure. But um, sometimes it's good to have that pressure and you um, get through it and it's super satisfying. So I am gonna move on to my last finished object. This was also a test knit and this was for Pam Sapp. Um, her last name is not Sapp, but that's what she is on Instagram and over on Ravelry. And she did a bucket hat in crochet. And then there are those of us that don't crochet hoping to start in 2022. And so she made a knit version and had uh, a call out for test knitters. And I was kind of late to that party, but I know the pattern probably will go up today or for sure over the weekend, but I did test knit this for her. I just finished it last night, sent over my pictures and I'm super duper excited about this one. Love the way it fits. I will definitely be making more of these. I'll be working out in the yard with these all summer long. Um, I will pop in some pictures. I will go ahead and put it on, um, but love this little bucket hat. I think the only thing that I will probably do differently on the next one is I'm gonna make the brim wider with this garter brim. Um, and that way I can, um, it'll come a little bit further down on the brim, but love, love, love this hat. Super duper cute, um, would be a great, great, like just a gift knit would be really good for um, little kids. This is an adult version. I did the small and I used um, Patton's Grace Cotton Yarn, um, which is like a sport weight, which is what it called for, sport weight yarn, and it's held together. So I used blush and violet, um, purple. So uh, those are the colors that I held together, but I just could see this like in a fuchsia, um, a really deep purple, like an eggplant with white would be really nice tomorrow. And then of course, white and uh, sunflower yellow. Really excited to do one of those. So I will get one of those on my, uh, get a few of the, more on my needles, but um, super quick, super quick knit. So I actually started this, I wanna say on the 29th. I think she sent the pattern over to me on the 28th. I started it. I did start on the 28th, but I only cast on, but then continued through the on the 29th and then I was done last night. So super quick knit and it's not, and I was knitting on other things and I was also working in between that. So it's not like I just knit on it all day long, but I'm really, really satisfied with this test knit. So I'm looking forward to the pattern being published and um, you know, go over and grab the pattern, knit on it. Uh, it's a great summer knit cause it is cotton. Uh, yarn and I'm actually thinking about maybe trying the same style of hat because I I do like this style of hat on me and maybe could be a winter hat for me. I think she has a pattern out that's similar to this that's in worsted weight. So um, I will definitely be jumping on that bandwagon. So, all right, let me take a sip of my tea. So that is all for my finished objects. I do have a few whips. Um, I have started in a few more um, cowls, uh, cows, <laughs> K-A-L, knit alongs. And the one that right now I'm really um, actively kind of working on is gonna be my um, sweater. It's called After the Rain. It's by Heidi Kermeyer. 
This is a knit along with Pearl Together. Jana Pearl Together um, is hosting this knit along. And this is just, like I said, I'm just now starting the collar and getting ready to finish with the neck, well, neck band, I guess. And then I'll go into the yoke. The yoke part started actually a couple of days ago, but I'll catch up here in the next couple of days and I'll be right where I need to be to continue on with the uh, knit along. But really like the way these colors are um, playing together. This is um, yarn from A Girl and Her Wool. It's DK weight yarn. Um, and I'll show you those so that you can see these. So these are my yarn colors from A Girl and Her Wool. And this is, I wanna say Pebble Rocks, or I'll list them, I'll link the uh, names below. But uh, really, really like that. And the yarn is super duper soft. And that will probably be done here in June. I think the knit along goes through the end of June, but feel free to jump in. Um, and I will pop a picture in of the um, pattern, but it's after the rain. Uh, it's a long sleeve, almost kind of sweatshirty type, but not super heavy, um, which is really great for me here in Colorado because in the evenings it gets sometimes really cool. And you know, you'll be super hot during the day, but it will be a great one that you could have a t-shirt underneath, pull the sweater off um, as it gets cooler. Like if you're at a barbecue or something like that, or just hanging out back on the deck, you can put it on as the sun goes down and it gets cooler, but really, really liking that and um, glad that I joined. So another knit along that I will be casting on for today, um, the cast on party I think was actually yesterday, is knitting with Kim and Jana, and they are doing a uh, sweater knit along, and these feature, um, and I knew I was gonna draw a blank on that. So let me look at my notes, because I do have it. It's, I'm doing the Dingley Dill, and they are doing, and this is um, a Mayak, it's a Mayak knit along as well. Um, and this pattern is, by, I just totally drew a blank. I'll link it below because, um, and it actually happens to be on my Make Nine board. So it just worked out that um, Isabel Kramer, sorry, Isabel Kramer, <laughs> that's called old age. <laughs> Um, but it's by Isabel Kramer. So it's the Dingley Dell um, t-shirt. It's it's really like a, it's a tee. And it's really nice. It's striped. I will put a picture um, of the pattern in. And I have not cast on yet, but my colors, there's some really, you know what? I Well, this is actually my swatch. So I'm not gonna, it was my swatch. But my colors kind of, so this is a beigey color, and then this is purple. But love the way those colors, again, are looking together. And these are, um, I chose to, I'm not using my act because I had already purchased this for the, the, to make this top before I knew they were gonna even do this cow. And this is, um, Marisol is the name of the uh, yarn. And it's uh, Soka Legato. I hope I'm not butchering that. But um, yes, yeah, Soka Legato. And the purple is purple. <laughs> and the beige is taupe. So it's taupe and purple. And that's the um, yarn that I'm using there. So, and that's, it's a fingering, it's a super fine fingering weight yarn. So it's really light. Um, it'll be a light top, again, that I'll be able to wear through the summer. And I'm really looking forward to um, wearing that. So, uh, whips, whips, whips. I have one more, well, I've got two, but one I haven't really worked on. I showed these socks in my last podcast and I decided after working through them, um, I will cast on the other one this weekend. Not quite finished, I'm getting ready to start with the toe. But this is going to be, um, I talked back in episode two, I believe, or three. I'm sorry, three, because this is episode five. And I don't think I said that at the beginning. Sorry. Episode five. Um, 
I talked about socks for strangers, and this is gonna be um, one of my socks for strangers that I leave somewhere for um, a stranger but a friend. And they will get this pair of socks. They're super soft. Um, obviously, we are in our summer months here in uh, North America, but somebody will hopefully be able to use these in the winter months here in Colorado as it gets cooler. So that is gonna be um, a pair that I wrap up for socks for strangers. So, and then I have one other whip here and I've made a little bit of progress. I probably will not have this done. Um, this was actually a cow that Crazy of the Sock Lady, um, K of Crazy Sock Lady had uh, hosted and it goes to like the 15th of June, but it was a cable sweater cow. And I have made a little bit of progress. This is where I was the last time I showed this, which I think is, was an episode um, three, maybe four, I showed it again. But um, I've made a little bit of progress. It just, it takes a lot of, um, I have to think about it just because it is cables. And so I, um, I can't just pick it up and just start knitting. I have to know that I have time and I can read the pattern and um, all of that other stuff. So. But again, really, really liking the way it's knitting up and not that there's a need for the sweater right away. So that's also really good. And um, I'll have that for the winter. And I think that actually does it for knitting. Um, I will go into some life chatter. I will show a couple of acquisitions. This is actually from my, it's a yarn subscription that I have with uh, Destination Yarns and um, it's Destination and Lane, Aaron Lane Bags. And this was this month's, uh, this was May actually, May's colorway. And it's called Watertown Lakes National Park. Waterton Lakes National Park. And again, they just, they know Lisa. They keep my uh, subscriptions lately have been of the purple color it tone and it's just great for me because I love purple so um, I don't know what I'm gonna make with this I may cast on a pair of socks for summer sock camp which has just started um, started on the 28th of May and boo I'm so sad I didn't get I wasn't able to get the summer sock camp yarn uh, when Kay did her shop update for all summer camp stuff. I did I did manage to get an enamel pen and I got, um, I think some stitch markers, which is fine. I mean, I have tons and tons of yarn, but one of the dyers that um, was a sponsor for Summer Sock Camp is uh, Happy Mermaid Yarn Co. If you haven't used their yarns, go check them out. I did get their yarn. She, they were actually a sponsor uh, last for last year's Summer Sock Camp, and I did get their yarn. I got it on their Sparkle Base, and I actually am going to use that for a pair of socks this summer because I did not cast on with it last summer. Um, but I have used their yarn. I did order a different colorway of yarn um, called Stargazing for Summer Sock Camp, but I reached out to them on Etsy because they do have an Etsy shop. And they are going to do an update, I believe, for Summer Sock Camp. So I am going to, fingers crossed, that I'm able to snag a skein of that yarn. But if not, it's all good. Um, I love being part of the... Um, I love being part of the Knit Along the Summer Sock Camp. This is the third year. I've done it each year. Um, it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of great people. Um, quite a few of the campers that I met last year, we are friends on Ravelry and we swap patterns and, you know, we message back and forth, uh, have a lot of them on Instagram as well. So um, it's just fun. It's a fun way to meet other knitters. And, um, you know, the plan is hopefully with fiber festivals opening back up, I'm hoping to go to some fiber festivals here and a lot of times you will run into them at fiber festivals and it just, it's fun. It's, it's kind of like, these are your pen pals. Um, and, but you're dealing with yarn. So good things. And actually I do have one more, um, whip that I didn't show you. And this is actually on my make nine board as well. I did show you this a while back. 
before I had actually cast it on, but it's called uh, Pale Cold Moon Shawl. And this was a knit along a while back. I didn't actually do the knit along, but um, it's a shawl and I'm working through this. So I have started this and of course it's taupe and purple. I don't love, it's a DK weight shawl. This DK weight is more, to me, it's more like a fingering weight. This is cloudborn yarn. And I'm gonna keep knitting on it just because I've made that much progress with that part and I hate to tear that out. But I have a feeling that I'm gonna make another one with a thicker DK weight yarn. Actually, I have a DK two, uh, main color and a contrasting color that I got from um, Amanda of Mandy's Makings. And I think I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna cast on a second one and see if I like that one better. And if I do, then I might frog this. But for now, it's kind of on a timeout. I was working on it really hard last week and I was putting in a lot of time and I just wasn't liking the fabric. And you know, knitting should bring you joy. So I want the knitting to bring me joy. And it's not bringing me a ton of joy. And for me to not, for this to be my color, purple, and it's not bringing me joy, it probably should be something else. So we'll see. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna cast on another one, work through that a little bit, see if I like that fabric better. And if I do, then I probably will frog this. So next podcast, I'm sure I will give you an update on that. But like the colors, Love the shawl, um, just not super happy with the way the uh, yarn is knitting up. So it's just a little bit thin for me. So we'll see, but um, that's that. So, and I do have that yarn from last year's summer sock camp. Um, and I don't think they, I was looking to see if they had a name on it, but I think it was just, Summer Sock Camp 2021. So this is the yarn. So I am gonna, I'm gonna um, wind this up and I probably will cast on tonight while I'm watching TV um, with that yarn. So that's that I think for yarny goodness. I think it is. So let's go into some life chatter. Um, as I said, May has been a really, really busy month. or May was a really, really busy month. So a couple of things. I know back in episode three, um, we talked, I think I even had in there that it was all about Houston or Texas talk. And I actually was contemplating, or we were contemplating moving to Texas for my job. And I actually got the job in Texas and I turned the job down and took a promotion here in Colorado instead. Same company. Um, I work for a major airline. So um, I decided to uh, take the promotion here and stick around in Colorado. So um, right now, Texas is on hold and, you know, may bubble up in the future. But right now, it's all about Colorado and my knitting and Yo Yarn Girl. Um, things for the podcast. Um, you know, I think I talked before that, um, you know, we're looking at opening the shop and more to come on that. But um, there's quite a few things that are um, happening for Yo Yarn Girl, which I'm really, really excited about. So be looking for um, more to come on that. So that being said, um, I wanted to mention some podcasts that I have watched over the last uh, month or so. And one that I came across is uh, Real Knitting, uh, Jennifer of Real Knitting. And she has lots and lots of um, stuff to show us and um, really, really like her podcast. And then This Alexa Knits is another one that um, I've watched and really, really like her podcast. And this Alexa Knits is a newer podcaster like myself. So I know the last that I was on there, she didn't have a bunch of subscribers. So if you would, just don't go check her out. And if you like what you see, like and subscribe to her channel. 
Um, we always like when we have uh, new viewers and, you know, you may not, every episode may not be your thing, but, um, you know, hopefully at some point when you stop by, you see something that you like. So, um, yeah, check them out if you get a chance. Um, the other one that I watch quite often and they're not new to podcasting and they have lots of, uh, they have lots of finished objects, lots of things that they've worked on and they're, I think they're pretty, um, experienced knitters, but I know that Jana, I believe will say a lot. I'm a new knitter and I see some of the stuff that she does and I don't consider her a new knitter, but we all have our own, you know, that's, that's our personal take on things. So she feels she's still a new knitter and that's fine. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few more that um, I will probably mention in my next podcast. I just really wanted to get on here and put something out because it's been such a while since I have done a podcast. And I um, this is something that brings me joy. So I needed a little bit of pick me up and sunshine. And I said, you know what, even if it's only 15 minutes, I wanted to get on and you know, show you some of the things that I have been working in, working on over the last couple of months. So, um, I will link everything that I've talked about and yarns below. I will also link some of probably my dream knitting, um, down below. I won't go into a lot of that, um, right now, but look for, um, another lengthier podcast probably in the next couple of weeks. I hope to have lots of, um, FOs for you and then I'll have some more life chatter. So thanks for stopping by. Until then, happy knitting.